What role do you think food has to play like the children's sensitivity? For instance, like a lot of kids are really sensitive. They see things, they feel things, they're very connected. And then life happens, school and food and what's right and what's wrong. Um, how much do you think the component of cooked food has to do with desensitizing versus all the other components? It happened like this system TV. Okay, yeah. Well I would I would say that the cooked food, the salt, stimulating salt, the the numbing bread and milk and whatnot and spices stimulating, it will have a huge effect distracting from the kind of natural state of a human being, a sensitive human being. Um, spiritual human being. We are all, we all have this spirituality. I mean, we are right here <laughs> doing it. But I don't know how, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare to, like, grade how different things affect, uh, like, in relation to other things. And I think it can also be very individual. Like, we have a physical body, so, and we have genetics, and we have stuff passed on from our ancestors parents so we can have different sensitivities to different things and if something is totally stimulating to me and totally numbing it will definitely have a, a bigger effect on me in regards to like um, um, kind of clouding my spiritual sensitivity definitely but uh, everything everything will be able to affect this sensitivity I think like all kinds of violence have a effect. And that is also like, comes down to just the language we use. Because none of us have learned really to use a non violent language. I've heard that um, once you start healing yourself, you can start healing the generational trauma in your mind. Have you heard of that? Anymore? Do you think that, like, that affects, like, once you start healing, will it also affect your parents, and how, have you noticed that in your life? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you think about, like, emotional or spiritual healing. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Um, of course, one component is them just seeing me. I mean, first being very worried with me going vegan, you're going to miss out on all these nutrients. But then, now, 25 years later, I mean, they have seen that, wow, this is actually really good. <laughs> and raw, even better. And so so this, that's that thing. But there's also this, energetically, like, it, it, it does something. When you heal something in this life, you will heal everything that is connected to it and okay this is my personal but i see also a lot of people agree my experience is that time is also a construct like the linear time the way i see time is basically like an open field like a um, a space field you could say like time and space is kind of the same it's just that we travel through them in different ways and so we, we um, perceive them differently but, so everything, basically there is no time, but everything is, is now, it's just that you're traveling through it. So when you heal something now, you will be able to affect yourself in the future, or in the past, or in a different life. Or, um, and, and all the beings who are so closely connected with you, with your family, they will also be affected. Of course, they have their journey, and they have their stuff to go through, but they will be affected by you. When you smile at someone, if I smile at her, right, she's, she's gonna smile too, you know, it's gonna affect her. And it's, it's, it's the same way. And, and um, so when you do the healing, you will, you will actually, you don't have to like pull them out of the dirt. You don't have to like force them to change the diet. You just do yourself as well as you possibly can. And then you just let that beauty and that love just shine. And they are going to be affected whether they like it or not.
Yeah. And uh, and this is also the way to do it. This is the respectful way to do it. Because forcing someone, that is violence. Yeah. Even if, I mean, basically, um, preventing someone from taking their life is violence, right? But you might want to do that anyways. I mean, you're going to have to make the decision if you have the opportunity. But, Wait, I can tell actually one thing, because it was quite recently, just half a year ago, that I really went hard into some specific healing about my, my darkness from way back, like thousands and thousands of years, years back. And this was um, affecting me a lot, but my I protected myself from it, in part by being in my ego and, and basically not seeing this stuff, just kind of. And, and so in a healing session I had the intention to see all of me, to become aware of all of me, even the painful parts. And then these things started coming up and, and, and the darkness is, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into it now, like what that was, but basically um, I had acted in ways that over like years and years and um, kind of dimmed or killed the light in myself. So I, I had this fundamental feeling in my spirit that not only was I dark or bad or evil or something but like that, and not only was I born as a demon out of pure darkness, but I, like I was the definition of darkness. And um, that's a tough one to, to see and to realize and to integrate. But when I started doing that, um, well, okay, before this, way before this, like 25 years ago, I had also seen some things from, from different lives, like some memories in, in, in uh, like these meditation uh, sessions. And there's one life where I have been subjected to abuse, like sexual abuse. But I could also feel that, that I was like the abuser myself. Like there is like this, you are both sides basically. And I could see that in this life I was a, a, a woman and um, that woman was completely shut off like emotionally. Like there was no joy, there was no life. She was basically traveling through life without living. You know? It was just kind of... Uh, flatlining emotionally, it was both great. But after I started seeing my darkness, integrating it and loving it and accepting it, and actually becoming more whole from doing that, and then suddenly I was on the phone with a friend, and and I was talking about this, and we were talking about this other life that I had seen a long time ago, and also quite recently. But, but this time, I was like, oh yeah, I'm looking at this woman now from, from this other life. And my friend, she was like, yeah, but, but she's not like flatlining anymore. She's smiling. And, and I was seeing the exact same picture. So I was, I was healing myself through and beyond the, the limitations of this life. Right? So that's, that's amazing. That's a beautiful thing. And if, of course, if you have no concept of like spirit, or you don't believe in, in multiple lives, or you, this energy, or these things, then it's just gonna sound nuts. And that's okay. I mean, you don't have to believe, but but if you can see that, if you can feel it, then then it's uh, immensely powerful. Yeah. yeah. So just do your healing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, do you or have you had a relationship with like, the psychoactive plant medicines? And if so, um, how has that affected your spiritual journey and your journey to all these different things by the 
I, I have only tried a little bit, and that's quite recently. So, because I turned away from all kinds of drugs, like when I was 15, I saw that I was not getting smarter from any of that, um, and my friends, I guess a couple are dead, you know, few in like prison, and it's, yeah, it's not such a good thing. Uh, so I stayed clean, I stayed clean my entire life, except for when I, <laughs> actually when I, when I got my, my uh, because that kind of tears down the inhibitions and stuff, I wanted to see what, what comes up. And even though I am like sober and did not do any, I did have, I tried out for them, and it was, it was uh, not so dramatic, it was just this kind of strong up, you know, like 40% so kind of, so it was just like this, and not just drinking wine or anything like that. Like that. But, and I did this with my students too, when I uh, graduated them to, to the black belt. So, uh, you can question that, you know, but, uh, yeah, it served a purpose like that. <laughs> but uh, what was I saying? Yes, so I've been sober since then, and 20 years and more. But then I tried uh, ayahuasca once, and it was a ceremony of three days, but I did not have the opportunity to be the three days, only one day. And um, when I tried it, I was still then under a lot of stress because there was a lot of this healing I'm talking about that I had not done yet. A lot. And even now. Um, and um, I was very much in my head, like my ego trying to analyze, understand. So, and, uh, and I watched, it wasn't, wasn't really strong, like in psychoactive. Not to me, at least. Uh, so I just kind of tried to understand what was going on, and tried to see what was happening, what would it be like if I get to meet her. Because with ayahuasca, you basically go on a trip. And, um, well, you have a shaman. How is it pronounced in English? Shaman, there. <clears throat> and he said, yeah, I mean, first time you do ayahuasca, I mean, most likely you're not going to meet her. She's not, she's not going to uh, reveal herself. She's not going to spend time with you. Because you're not ready, you're not... Mm. I don't know. Um, and I was there like analyzing all the time, trying to see what was going on. And instead of just feeling like, mm. I, like I normally do. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so I tried that. And um, only, only after the, the trip, I realized that she was with me. I, I did, you know, she was right there, and I have never felt so um, cared for. I understand they call her the mother. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. And I, I would never encourage anybody to do this. It has to be a complete the personal decision and I would be like, yeah. If you're gonna do it, do it with a proper shaman, like and not just like you have to you have to go by your, your intuition or gut feeling or recommendation. I would say do it in a serious way. Because you usually then do it in a group, right? And all this shit is going to come out. Like I have been healing and thrown out a lot of entities. Like you take on energies you also take on entities, like actually kind of living beings. And they can affect you in most like tragic ways. <laughs> and we need to. And uh, it's, it's nothing to be scared of. It's just that if you do like then Aya in a, in a group and stuff comes out of you, well, the guy sitting next to me being like vulnerable and open is like, yeah, just dive in there instead then. So you need this good shaman who can actually stay on top of this and, and actually throw them out, you know, cast them out. This is important, I think. Um, I would never do ayah without that presence. 
that's without that support. And then, yeah, it's interesting. He also told me because he told me in the beginning, yeah, you you have a big head. He said, I was like, yeah, I know it's so difficult. You know, it's like so in control. Um, and he said, you know, yeah, probably won't be. Here, but this is what we're gonna do. This is the sermon, and you know. And then afterwards, you know, I guess I was just sitting there, and I told him that. Uh, now I see. So now I, I feel she's here. Did she stay with me for almost a week actually? And he was like, Yeah, it must be uh, because your body is pure or pretty clean. And with the fraternism and everything. And he said, When you drank the first cup, boom, she was there. So it so it really does make a huge difference. And I was not throwing up or anything. I was just, you know, just lying there experiencing it, and and uh, only afterwards I started throwing it out because it is it is poison to the body. I mean, it is hard to the body. There's no question about that. So it had to come out. You know, I'm not going to digest that and have it go through my 